What's up folks, welcome back to Hacksplain and today we're going to have a really really exciting session. We're going to talk about Burp Suite's intruder functionality. Alright, so let's jump straight into explaining to you what Burp Suite's intruder is doing. And I want to start with a use case first. Let's go to our amazing OVASP shoe shop and let's try to log in. And I have pre-created a user for this video, which is test at hacksplain.com. And I'm going to try to guess this user's password. And I'm going to try this with ASDF, ASDF, and hit enter to log in. What we see is that the email or password is invalid. So let's go to Burb and go to a proxy tab, and we see that request right in here. So what we can do right now is we can press Control I or use the right mouse button to say send to intruder which makes the intruder lighting up right here. All right, so we're having a request in here right now, which we want to play around with. And what you can see over here is intruder tries to spot interesting injection points for you, but we don't want to make use of those right now. So usually I just go on um, clear, which is the first thing I do, and then I think about what do I want to do and I want to start right now with explaining you the different attack types that Burp Suite offers and we can see over here there is sniper, battering ram, pitchfork and cluster bomb and to make this a little more understandable I will do something and use the email parameter as injection point number one and you can do that by just going to add and I will use the password as injection point number two. So let's click on add and let's start with sniper and I'm going to demonstrate you that by going to payloads and I will add payloads down here in the payload options. I'm just using one two and three so remember we are in the sniper mode let's just start the attack up here without further configuring anything I will show you a little more later well if you use the community edition you get this little hint saying that there is some throttling in place and intruder is pretty slow with that but we'll just skip that for now so what we can see is we get all the requests coming in and it's a total of six requests and let's look at the request over here. So we see that in our first payload position we had the payload one inserted and the rest, the, the second payload position stayed the same. If we go to our second request we see that second payload was inserted into our first injection spot and then the third payload was injected into our first injection spot and then if we go to the fourth one we see that the first payload was injected into the second injection spot and that goes on like that I guess you, you get the idea behind Burp Suite's sniper mode so let's jump and one thing I wanna I wanna show you you only have one payload set with burp sniper mode and you will see this changing in just a bit so let's go to battering ram so we check our payloads again we still only have one payload set we start the attack skip that warning and what we will see here is we have less requests so what was happening if we look at the request we can see that the first payload was actually injected right now in both of the injection points 
So you see payload one in here, and at the same time in here, if you go to request number two, you see payload number two in here, and at the same time in here. So this is Burp's battering ram mode. Well, let's jump to Pitchfork. And Pitchfork is interesting because now we do have two payload sets. Why do we have two payload sets? Because we do have two insertion points right here. We have the email insertion point and we have the password insertion point. So let's go to our payload set. Number one is still set to one, two, three. The second one is empty. So we will provide some more payloads for that. We'll say four, five, and six. Let's click on start and see what happens. So we see that we still have three requests going on here. So this is similar to battering RAM, but now it's not the same payload being injected in both the injection points. It's payload number one. So actually the first payload of payload set number one is injected in the first injection spot and payload number one of the second payload set is inserted in the second injection spot and that goes on like that so you have the second payload of the first set in here and the second payload of the second set in here which sums up to three requests so let's try out our last one which is cluster bomb and cluster bomb is basically saying let us try all the possible combinations and you can see that in here we start with one four go to two four and three four so now we have exhausted all the combinations with four in our second payload so let's use five out of the payload set two and start again with one two three and that goes on like that um, all the way down to the very bottom so we have tried out all the mathematically possible combinations in this mode all right i guess that makes it clear what all those attack types are doing so let's go back to our actual use case and we are using we're going to use sniper for that i will clear the and we'll clear that up again and uh, i will just select our password field right now whoops so that works add it to intruder and i'm going to click on clear so first of all you can see that we only have one payload set left right now the options are still set to the ones from our previous runs which i don't want to use right now so i click clear and all the payloads are gone so now we want to brute force the actual password of my test user so in order to do that we need a good list of payloads in here and i want to show you something which is fuzzdb by fuzzdb project which you can find on github and if you look at that there is a word lists user password folder then there's another passwords folder right here and i'm just going to use john txt for the sake of this video so you see a lot of passwords in here which we can use right now in our burp intruder brute force attack so let's click on raw which gives us this representation. Then I'll control C to copy all the, the passwords. And then let's go back to our burp suite. And we can simply click paste right now. And we can see that we have inserted 3,107 passwords, which is pretty massive. So what else do I wanna show you? Before I go into start attack, I wanna show you something really nifty about burp suite so let's go down over here in the options tab to crap extract what crap extract is doing it shows me the response of the request that i've sent into burp intruder and in that case i got back invalid email 
or password. And what I can do right now is I can select that and Bird will do all the regex magic happening up here for you. And I'm going to tell Perb, tell me in my attack result window what I would see in this line, in this in this space of the, the response over here. So I click OK. And I just quickly check one more time that I do have all my settings right. I haven't changed anything over here. I cannot change too much in the request engine section over here. This is due to me using Burp Suite Community Edition. And I'll check my payloads once again. I check my position once again. Everything looks fine. So let's start cracking the password of the user. I'll just start the attack. And we can see that the requests are coming in. I'm using my list of passwords that I have inserted into the payload. And you can see password one, two, three, four, five was my first guest and so on. Click on requests up here to sort the requests coming in in a different order. And what I did right before with the, the crap extract was to put this column in here and you can see this is invalid this is also invalid so if you want to keep watching this window you can immediately spot if something is invalid or not and we will just do that for a little bit further and see if anything is changing and if you were looking at the window pretty closely you might have seen by now that we do actually have a pretty interesting entry in here. I will pause this for now, click on attack, pause, and go to that request. Why is this one interesting? We see a different status, and we see a different length, and we see that our regex found something different. Now it doesn't say invalid email or password, it says authentication token. And that sounds pretty interesting. So I go to the response section and check what the response was. And I actually see that I did get a JOT token back. So going to request one more time, I will quickly check what was the successful password. And I can see that it was let me in. Jesus, now we successfully cracked the password of test at hacksplain.com. So we can close the window right now over here because we don't need it anymore. We go to Ovo's oh, Choose Shop. We go to that window one more time. We try it out. Let me in. Hit enter. And what do we see over here? We are locked in as taskattacksplain.com. All right. This was it for today. Introducing you to Burp Suite's Intruder component. I hope you like the video. I will show you a couple of more features, more details about Burp Suite's Intruder soon in different videos. So stay tuned. And until then, thanks for watching. Subscribe up to the right and stay tuned.